Good morning, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. I am a little tired today. Not as tired as I was yesterday, but not that anyone cares. Uh, so, little housekeeping. So, today is October 20... 20th. Yes, because Black Adam comes out today. I'm wearing my opposite company t-shirt because that has become a running joke at this point where anytime a DC or a Marvel show, movie comes out, I wear the opposite shirt. It started out as an accident way back almost 10 years ago, but now it is a, uh, a thing, as the kids say. So, all of this is going on, and uh, we are a little over a month, about a month and a week, out from the release of Echo Delta Part 1 new book that I have coming out, and I'm just going to put this little plug in, and I'm going to record a a longer commercial, probably tomorrow, that I'm going to put before all the episodes uh, between now and release, so get ready to hear a lot about it, because um, I've said this before, I think, um, the the funding for the show, um, while there are ads that run on it, uh, does come mostly from sales of the book, uh, sales of the multiple books which are available on Amazon. And if you go to multipleworldproductions.com slash pre-order, you can go to pre-order um, both Echo Delta Part 1 and We Are Better Than Our Worst Instincts, which comes out in June. And and look, I'm, I, I know times are tough, but I keep the cost very low. The, the cost is the literal lowest I can put it on and, and retain the royalty rate because I do not want Amazon getting most of the money, but Kindle does have a sizable market share. So if you have a Kindle device, um, if you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, you can get the Kindle app and it all works the exact same. Um, it is $2.99. Go to, um, what is it? Multipleworldproductions.com slash pre-order and you can pre-order Echo Delta Part 2. Anything pre-ordered goes directly into helping the show out. We have some cool things in the budget or that we're, we're budgeting for now that when we announce the full, you know, release slate in a few weeks, we will also be announcing what the money is going towards and, and you know, what, what our goals are, what our stretch goals are, all that good stuff. Um, so, until we get to that, we will be talking about our regular schedule programming. In this case, we're talking about Andor. The, um, the seventh episode? Yeah, because it was three then there was another three, and now we're in the fourth pod of three, I think. Was this seven or was it eight? I think this was seven. Uh, I don't know. It's, everything is blurring together. I'm going to look it up on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, episode seven. Episode seven of Ander. Um, and for me, episode's great. This show continues to be the best of the Star Wars Disney Plus shows. Um... For me, the episode's great, and I understand this is a fan service moment, um, but I think that, and let's, I think that's what I'm going to use this episode as an avenue to talk about, is use of fan service. Um, it, we, we've talked about in the past the, the inclusion of things like, um, what's it called, like uh, Bo-Katan, um, for, for Boba Fett to come back, for... Um, who was the other one? Um, Cobb Vath for, um, what's his fucking book of Boba, book, the book of Boba Fett. Like, all of these characters that are making a return, um, and they're, they're you know, they're just, look, it's this guy from the show, look, it's this guy from Clone Wars, look, it's this guy from a book, look, it's, and it's like, okay, great, here's a, 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 a a, a tertiary or I guess quadruciary character, if that's a word, from from Aftermath, who's making a big appearance in in fucking Mandalorian, like because because that like that's the thing is in, in Mandalorian season two, like the Marshal Cobb Vanth, like that his story, his origin, where he got the armor and all of that, comes from what's it called? It comes from Aftermath, uh, the first Aftermath book by Chuck Wendig. Um, and and looking at you know and it's like Bo-Katan comes from uh, Clone Wars. Um, same thing with what's his fuck at the end of uh, what's it called at the end of Book of Boba Fett and, and 
you know, Luke Skywalker is Luke Skywalker. But these are all fan service moments that don't add a tremendous amount to the proceedings. But are there to be like, oh, cool, it's that thing you know already. See, it's that thing you know. We're kind of rewarding you for watching this other stuff. But at the same time, it's not really doing a lot for anyone who's not a super fan. If you're not a super fan of the show, then or, or the franchise where you don't know anything, it's like, okay, but what does this mean for me, the average viewer? And I think that this show has kind of not done that up until this point, where it's like there's there's that moment when you're in um, uh, Stellan Skarsgård's, um, like, room, and, or his, uh, his, his curio shop, I guess is the best way to put it, and, uh, you see, like, they have Jedi and Sith holocrons, they have, um, the Sith stalker armor, they have, like, all that kind of stuff, it's like, this is really cool, but why is this on Coruscant, and, and the Empire is just kind of cool with this, um, all that kind of stuff is kind of interesting, um, and my thing is, um, like, this episode, I think, is the first time they've introduced a character who is established in Star Wars lore that is kind of important, and that comes in with the introduction of Admiral Yularen, um, which he was in the Clone Wars a little bit, but his biggest claim to fame in Star Wars is he worked with Thrawn in the first of Timothy Zahn's Thrawn origin books that was released by uh, by Disney in the aftermath of the culling of the majority of... Um, what's it called? In the, in the majority of... Uh, oh, fuck, what's it? Uh, the, the old expanded universe. Um, he helped take down Nighthawk in the first Thrawn book. Um, so they're bringing in the big guns here. They're bringing in... Yularen. Now, the thing about this that works is that Yularen is a, a big enough character. And the thing is, too, it's like when you look back at, like, you know, what, what they did in, like, even, like, Obi-Wan, where it's like, there's a reference to Quinlan Voss, and it's like, that's cool. Can we see Quinlan Voss, though, if he survived Order 66? Like, if that's where we're going with this, and Quinlan Voss is alive during the, the Dark Times between the, the Rebellion and the Empire, uh, between the, uh, the Republic and, or between the prequels and the original trilogy, then can we see him? Instead of being like, oh my god, Quinlan Voss is here. It's like, cool, love that, awesome that he survived, but, like, can he show up and do something? Um, and, and, and looking at, you know, what's it called? Looking at the whole, uh, what, the, the introduction of Yularen in this case. That's how I was going with this. He he is here to track down after the after the heist. In the last episode, he is here to try and figure out what happened and track down the rebels um, who who did this to 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 the Empire. And it's a great way to use the character. And if we're we're getting now, and that's the thing is like we had that one girl who was like looking at patterns. Who was like if I, like that line she has where it's like. If I was wanted to make it look random, this is how I would do it. And, uh, like, her her whole thing was very Thrawn-like. And it's like, I'm like, I, I, I bet. Because that was the thing, is like, when, when you read those books, the books are, you know, the books are the books. They're not fantastic. Um, Zahn does what Zahn does well. And, and, and for, for what are ostensibly space and naval warship books, um, it, it, they're, they're very good. I mean, if you, if you can sit through, um, Keed and Salvo and the same fucking words used over and over and over again, then, you know, by the, you know, we're, we're, you'll be fine, but, uh, maybe it's just because I listened to the audiobook, I noticed it a little bit more, but if I was reading it, I probably wouldn't notice it as much, but if you can sit through that, you're in for a good time. Um, and it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad book by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but one of the things that was in there was that he would always be try. like, Thrawn wasn't someone who was like, I'm the smartest guy in the room, and no one can be as smart as me. Mm -hmm. Like, I will actively keep people in the dark about what I'm doing, 
in an effort to, you know, not, you know, in an effort to not, you know, not be the one that people have to go to for this kind of nonsense. He was always like, look, I, I study art of various cultures. I, I, I study their art and because that gives me insight into who they are as people. I, I, I recognize patterns and that's why he's a master strategist. And look, part of that definitely comes from the fact that we need a way to explain it to the audience without him being like, aha, and here's me unfurling everything I knew the entire time. And so, so it does make sense to be like, look, I'm, you know, it's kind of more of a mentor mentee relationship with him and his, and his, and his crew. Um, and, and, and it is an interest, like, that's what makes those books so interesting, is that it's like, you get these explanations, and if you go back and read these books, it's great, because it's like, especially, like, if you go back and read Heir to the Empire, which is no longer canon, but if you read Heir to the Empire, you can very much see that, like, if you, I think I said this when I talked about it a while back, where it's like, when you watch, um, The Flash, TV show. Season 4 of The Bad Guy was um, The Thinker. And there was no reason why in a lot of cases The Thinker should have been able to figure out their plan. It seemed like his only superpower was that he had a copy of the script for the show to be able to be like, okay, and then they're gonna do this, 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 and this. Because it's like things like, okay, so there's a black canary from Earth X that is a bad guy too who didn't go back to Earth Act. Like, how does he know all that? Where's the explanation to all that? And it's like, his plan, you know, took a back burner when the nuke was going off, and it, there's a whole lot of things going on there. Um, but with Heir to the Empire and all of that, you you get the sense that, when, when Zom was writing it, the characters don't know what's going on, but Thrawn is piecing it together. And Thrawn's just piecing it together faster than everyone else. And that's what makes him so scary, is that you can come up with all these grand plans and grand designs, but he will be quick to figure out what you're doing, and not only will he be quick to figure out what you're doing, but he'll be quick to come up with a counteract to what you're doing to keep you from from succeeding in what you're trying to do. It is... It's what makes him so, you know, such a scary villain. And looking at the bringing him into this show, I think, is where this has to go. Because I think what we're going to see is we are seeing the setup of Thrawn as someone who was there at the end of, at the beginning of the Rebel Alliance, and he was there to, to kind of try and stop its formation. And he was ultimately unsuccessful, but they had to beat him in a day as ex machina. Because they had to bring the space whales and to pull him into hyperspace. Um, but Look, if that's the case, and we're, we're going to say Thrawn is going to be the, you know, Thrawn is going to be the, the big, what's it called, the uh, the big bad of, you know, all of Star Wars now. I feel like that's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, and I think introducing Thrawn in what's it called, introducing Thrawn in this show is a is an easy way to start bringing him in to a more mainstream audience. Because let's be honest, Rebels. While Rebels did get very good, Rebels was on Disney XD. Rebels started out as a kind of non-sequitur Star Wars show that didn't really go anywhere for the entire first season. That first season is entirely forgettable. And then season two, when Ahsoka shows up, and we start with that, that's when the show starts to get good. Especially once Maul shows up, and then Thrawn later on. And that first season, though, is kind of... It's kind of like watching any other show that was on... Disney or Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon during the day, where it's like, this is meant to run in syndication, so let's not give a crap too much about plot lines, let's not give a crap too much about, you know, about making characters feel, you know, like they're growing, like, it felt like every episode Ezra Miller's learning, uh, <laughs> woo, wrong Ezra, uh, Ezra Bridges learning the same lesson, and it's like, let's just move on and, and, and start doing, and then they start doing better things in later seasons. Um, I think that if you look at, um, this, this, you know, to to get past, people may not know Thrawn beyond the fact that he was in those books in the 90s, um, this is an interesting way to go about bringing him in. Um, I just don't know if this is the, you know, it, it, it is an interesting approach 
Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him show. I think, I think that, um, I, I think that the, um, the, I almost said Irulan. Irulan is not his name. I think you, Lauren, showing up is 100% the harbinger that Thrawn is coming. Um, because of how closely hewn these two characters are. Um, and, and, and how important Yolaren is when it comes to establishing, um, to, to taking down Nighthawk. And, and that was another thing where it's like, we are trying to quell the rebellion. And that's kind of what we're seeing for this era of Star Wars, where it's, we are, we are here to methodically take down the rebellion. We are, you know, because that's the thing too, is that one of the things I'm figuring out, because I'm, I'm, I was watching it, and before the show came out, I said, we've seen the origin of the Rebellion, because they did that in Solo, they did that in Rebels, they, they, you know, I don't need to see it again, and one of the things that, I think I said this last week or two weeks ago too, where it's like, the idea that it's called the Rebel Alliance, it's not called the, you know, it, it is, it's not the, the Rebel, you know, it, it's not like, you know, the Rebellion, I mean, they call it the Rebellion, but at the end of the day, it is the Rebel Alliance. And the reason for that is, is that there are a bunch of cells. There are a bunch of, you know, Rebel fighter cells that are all working together. And I think that, that also goes into, when we get into the era where the Mandalorian takes place and the Book of Boba Fett takes place, is there is this confusion um, among the galaxies and within the, and within the New Republic. And that comes from the fact that there is no real centralized government. Um, everything's kind of confused. It's not like the Empire, which, you know, when we when we see the Bad Batch, the Empire very quickly consolidates power. The Empire very quickly is like, okay, so, you know, the, the Republic is no more, we are now an Empire. All right, cool, what does that mean? And it's immediate. We are we are rolling out a, um, like, a, a social security card, a number system. Everyone's getting one of these social security cards um, in their, in their data bank. And if you, when you get it, you can transfer all of your Republic credits into Imperial credits. And it's like, all right, cool. That, you know, we, we get that now. That is why they were able to consolidate power that quickly and how they were able to, to become what they became. Um, I just, like, and, and, and that is why, like, as they do this, and it's like, okay, so Rebels shows the introduction of, you know, this group of Rebels. You know, this show was showing... Mon Mothma and Cassian Ander and all of these other people. I'm gonna keep saying Ander as long as fucking Stellan Skarsgård keeps saying Ander, um, and all of that. And it's like you know the the idea that there's this much going on in the galaxy where there's this many groups and then they're all coming together and being like, all right, so this is the alliance of all of the people who are fighting against the Empire, and it's a it's a really interesting kind of approach to to tell that story differently. Um, and, and really expand upon some parts of Star Wars lore that are a little, not fuzzy, because fuzzy feels like the wrong word, but they are a little, um, what's it called? They are a little, uh, eh, hazy, I guess. I mean, hazy and fuzzy feel kind of similar. And that doesn't even get into the fact that I think we got K2SO for the first time this week. Um, the, uh, the, the, the robot that Alan Tudyk played in, uh, in Rogue One. Um. But, I mean, there's not really too much to talk about that. I think the bigger story, which I understand um, that, you know, Yolaren is not as big as, you know, as, as K2SO. Because K2SO was in a movie that made over a billion dollars. But uh, I, I think that Yolaren is definitely, for the for the, the arc of this show um, and where the show is going, Yolaren is much more important. Um, but... We'll wrap up there for today. Um, tonight, I will be seeing Black Adam. Um, I'm not super excited for it. Um, I, I never was. Um, and the, the recent reviews haven't exactly bolstered my confidence in this movie. But, seeing it anyway. Um, but, yeah. So, Black Adam uh, tonight. Uh, tonight. And, uh, yeah. So, again, if you want to pre-order uh, Echo Delta Part 1, if you go to multipleworldproductions.com slash pre-order, you can pre-order it there. Um, 
any anything helps. Um, and if you go it, on top of the page for Kindle books, if you go on there, you can um, check out the other books that we have available. If you want to read Swan Song and the other books that lead into this, you absolutely can. They're all available right there. Um, or the first one because this is part one. This is the the second part of the of the. You know, of the trilogy because it was echo it was going to be echo alpha echo delta echo omega um echo delta got split up into two parts so echo delta part one echo delta part two with echo delta part two coming out next year um but yeah it, uh, if you want to go back and read echo alpha that's on there too if you want to go back and read swan song or the muses or duet or it's duet then the muses that's all on there too uh, sizzle reel, all of it's on there. All of the Kindle editions, I always keep it at two ninety nine. I don't want to make them as, as expensive as a comic book, and they're all around feature length. Some of them are just shorter than, but they're all around feature length. Um, so we'll wrap up there for today, and until our next episode, which will be Black Adam tonight. Have a great rest of your week.